What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Sunday edition of the Pandemic Update for Sunday, July 28th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Today, our focus will be on a couple news stories and then some of our daily data and especially wastewater. On Sundays, we do like to spend at least 10 minutes on wastewater and we usually give you a 20 minute daily video of what the latest news is, some air quality data, pollen levels, some other stuff, some state data, and anything and everything COVID and other viruses to help keep you informed. Why? Because you don't get to hear very much about this in the news. You get a sports report, you get the news report, you get a five minute weather report, and if you ever hear about COVID or other viruses, it's at the most 30 seconds to two minutes. I give you 15 to 20 minute videos each and every day, and that's what we're going to do today. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. The more people that give it a thumbs up and hit that like button, the more YouTube will push this content out. Share this video with anyone you know. And of course, leave a comment down below. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified of when I do my videos. Alrighty, let's get started with the news. We have some breaking news. This just was brought to my attention by a user on X just prior to getting ready to do today's video, and that is U.S. Senator John Fetterman, Democrat of Pennsylvania, has tested positive for COVID. Now, I did a little bit of a uh, expanded quote tweet on this because it can be significant in several different ways. First off, we know he has had past health issues, including a stroke, and he also dealt with depression, may have been some other health issues that we don't know about, but that's not good. People who have had past health issues and then test positive for COVID, it's not always a good thing, so we'll have to monitor this closely. But we'll have to monitor this closely for another big reason. He was with all the others on Capitol Hill last week when Benjamin Netanyahu did that speech. As you can see here, Joe Manchin, he, he's president in this picture as well. You can see John Fetterman in the picture, no mask. There were a ton of congressmen, a ton of senators. I mean, this could turn into a super spreader. So this is something we're going to have to watch. It's been about five or six days since exposure. The question is, will the other people actually announce their positive case? Don't know, but we got to keep our eyes open to watch and see if anyone else starts reporting that they have tested positive for COVID. So once again, that is U.S. Senator John Fetterman, Democrat of Pennsylvania. He has tested positive for COVID. Already moving on, measles cases in the U.S. are already triple last year's total, and it's only July. Yes, this is not good. Let's read their little summary they put here. The number of measles cases reported so far this year has already tripled the 2023 total. According to the CDC, 188 measles cases have been reported. Experts attribute the trend to declining vaccination rates in the U.S. and a rise in measles cases worldwide. So yes, not good. Measles is continuing to rise. Want to find out something about the past or present? You can do that on my website, and that will be that story will make it to the archives, as will John Fetterman's COVID case. That will make it to the COVID positives archive as well. I'll probably work on that at some point, maybe this evening. Alrighty, moving on now to the pollen levels. And today, 43% of the country is in medium status. We are starting to unfortunately see more and more of this orange pop up, which is not a good thing. We're seeing it in the Midwest, we're seeing it in the Plains, we're seeing it in the Northeast, a lot of yellow now as well. So pollen, once again, is starting to become an issue. Make sure you take your allergy medicine. All right, moving on now to air qualities. And air qualities across the United States, there are definitely quite a few areas that are dealing with issues thanks to wildfire smoke. And you can see here, there are reds, maroons, purples showing up on the West Coast. California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Nevada, all experiencing bad air qualities. Today, some of this does spread its way 
into North Dakota and South Dakota. And take a look at this. It continues to the Great Lakes. And now to the east as well, there are bad air qualities. I don't know if all this is because of the wildfire smoke, but you can see here from about Pennsylvania on northeastward into New England. Yes, not good air qualities today. It's actually really bad in New York City and Connecticut, Boston area. Take a look at that. Boston seeing readings over 100. Not good. It's something we'll have to watch because there is a system out in the Atlantic. I don't have satellite imagery up, but there's a system out in the Atlantic that's going to back into the coast. And when that comes into the coast, the winds are going to be coming out of the northeast. Some of this bad air quality up in New England could filter its way down I-95 down to Philadelphia, Baltimore, maybe even Washington as well. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. Of course, we're watching heat-related illnesses because it is summertime. There are some places it is a problem right now. The Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, scattered about in the Southeast. Uh, the West Coast is really bad. And portions of the Great Lakes and portions of the Plains as well are dealing with problems today. Want to learn more about climate and weather? I have another place where you can do that. It is Climate Data Report over on X. And you can also follow me on my YouTube channel, Climate Data Report, as well. All right, now to some really not good news, bad news. Philadelphia yesterday, you know, we check the EMS levels for Philadelphia each and every day. I report to you what the calls are because they tweet it every day. Well... 965 EMS incidents were reported on Saturday. Again, 965. It was a little hot out, not extreme. It was not humid yesterday, so you have to wonder just what went on in Philadelphia yesterday. Not a good day. That's one of the highest levels I think we've ever reported since we started including them in these videos. Taking a live look in at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, we do see there are a few calls, about 11 calls right now, a couple of respiratory emergencies. Chester County, Pennsylvania is also seeing some calls right now. Actually, for Chester County standards, this is quite a few calls. We see respiratory difficulty, hemorrhaging, seizures, falls, falls again. A lot of fall calls. Syncopede, drowning. Ooh, that's not good. Someone swimming in or drowning. Yikes. Heart problems. So, yes, there are calls to be had right now. It is a busy Sunday. Taking a look at Walgreens for this week, we do note that the national positivity trend is going up for COVID. 39.6% this week. It was 39.2% last week. That's up by 0.4%. Total tests, 7,637. That is up from last week, which was 6,767. Alrighty, moving on now to United States wastewater. We'll talk about other parts of the world tomorrow. Our focus today is wastewater. Here we go. So if you're new to my channel, maybe you've never seen this map before. This is the CDC wastewater page. You see a lot of different colors on the map. You do see some gray on the map. Gray means eh, it's a wastewater site that did not update. White are new sites. There's 75 of them. Dark blue is 0 to 19% detected. And basically what that means is very low levels of COVID are being detected in wastewater. Now you're probably thinking, wait, COVID? Wastewater? Well, yes. Every household, every business, places that you go to have restrooms. People use the restrooms. Well, that waste that comes from the restrooms goes to waste treatment facilities. Some waste treatment facilities can actually test the water, you know, the waste that's coming through there to check for levels of different viruses. In this case, we're talking about COVID. In a moment, we can look at other viruses as well. And we'll do that on another page and we can see what the levels are in various different communities or in places that have wastewater sites. As you see here, New York State, there's a lot of wastewater sites. North Carolina, Louisiana, some states have several, but then you have some that hardly have any. Here you go, uh, North Dakota. What do you see? You're not seeing any wastewater sites there. So, yes, we can track COVID in wastewater to get a sense of how high levels are. And these dark blue colors that you see here, 0 to 19%, it's only 64 sites there. We don't like when that number is low. Why? Because that means there's a low number of sites that are at low levels, and all these higher colors are much higher. 
darker shade of blue is 20 to 30, or excuse me, lighter shade of blue is 20 to 39% COVID detected. That's 206 sites. And then the really light shade of blue, 40 to 59% COVID detected. That's 365 sites. And then orange, 60 to 79% COVID detected. That's 372 sites. And red is 80 to 100% COVID detected. That's 217 sites. Unfortunately, orange and red sites, the number of them did increase. Now let's go here and take a look at a few various different sites. We may make a detour or two along the way, probably in New Jersey. I'll explain in a moment. First off, let's take a look at New York City, because not every week do we see New York City up here. Here's a big wastewater site. One, almost 1 1.2 million population. It is in the red. Take a look at this. Signs that this site may be starting to peak. That is a good sign. Here's another New York wastewater site. 655,000 population. That one continues to rise. It's in the red. Here's a queen site in the orange showing signs of peaking. And here's another queen site that's also in the orange. And it is still going straight up. Kings County in the red going straight up. Here's another queen's going straight up. How about Staten Island? Look at that. Continuing to go straight up at this time. Up in New Hampshire, we can take a look here. And we do note that New Hampshire, we are seeing rising levels. Just only one red site and one orange site at this time. Here's another one that was dropping. Sullivan, I think is how you pronounce that. Only 6,000 population. It was dropping. Now it's starting to rise once again. And you get the idea here. There's a lot of orange and red sprinkled throughout the northeast. The southeast, there's a little ton of orange and red at this time. Southeast is doing just about the worst right now, as is the West Coast, and I'll show you here. You can see there's a ton of orange and red in the West Coast, and take a look at Utah. Yeah, that's really bad. Look at all these sites that are just orange and red. Some of them are peaking, some of them are not, some of them are just going straight up. Davis Weber, it's just really going upward there. Now, there's other ways we can take a look at wastewater. We can also do an average from the number of sites within a state. Let me explain. So California here, it says there are 41 wastewater sites reporting. Well, average them all out, you get very high levels. You also get very high levels up in Oregon, very high levels in Washington, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Nevada, pretty much all of the West Coast, with exceptions to Arizona, is coming up very high levels, and Montana is also just at high so, not good. But if we go even further, west or northwest, Alaska, high, and Hawaii is high. Those two were very high at one point in time. Texas, very high. New Mexico, Colorado, very high. Take a look at this. Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Minnesota, all very high at this time. Then in the east, there are some very high levels as well. Of course, Florida, we know, has continued to be very high. South Carolina is very high. And take a look at this. Massachusetts and New Hampshire are very high. Maine at this time is high. Vermont is just at moderate. New York State, believe it or not, out of 108 wastewater sites is low at this time. I think that's because of upstate New York and western New York not being as high. Let's take a look real quickly. Let's go backwards. And yes, we can see here they're not as high in many wastewater sites, but the big one, New York City. That is, we showed you that, New York City is really high at this time. Now, there's even another way we can look at wastewater. And we can actually look at several different viruses. Wastewater scan. Let's do the nationwide levels first. And we can see on the nationwide levels, COVID was continuing to rise. Then it has dropped a little bit recently. And we'll have to keep our eyes on that. Could we be peaking? Could we not be peaking? Remember, there is a new KP.3.1 Point one variant that is coming up in the wings, and I can show that to you here. Here it is, right here. KP.3.1.1. It's at 17.7%. It is expected to eventually outpace the old KP.3 variant, which is currently at 32.9%. At the time that happens, we'll have to see if COVID levels start going back up again. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV, and norovirus are not much of an issue at this time, though norovirus is the higher one, still at moderate. Now we can go to the Midwest region. Let's see what's going on there. In the Midwest, COVID still remains very high at this time. All the others are not much of an issue at this time. Even norovirus is coming in low. Let's go to the Northeast. We can see the Northeast at this time, again, is also high. 
RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV, all low. Norovirus is medium at this time. In the south, COVID levels have been very high. And you can see here almost 1,000 pathogens being detected. And that's not good. It started to drop, and now it's trying to go up a little bit. Could be one of those wonky movements. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A, influenza B, HMPV, all low. Norovirus is medium. And it almost looks like it might be starting to rise once again. In the West Coast, we do note here that COVID levels continue to be high. One of those wonky movements did occur, so that will likely get corrected. But overall, levels are high. RSV, though very low levels, starting to see a little bit of a rise for that. Influenza A is low at this time. Influenza B and HMPV is low. And norovirus is medium at this time. There is a wonky movement, but that should get corrected. Let's do a few individual sites here. Let's see what is going on in central New Jersey, shall we? Here's the Bridgewater Wastewater Facility. And you see COVID had rose back on July 12th, and then it is starting to drop a little bit now. That's good. RSV, influenza A, all the others are not really much of an issue at this time. So for the most part, we're just going to skip over them in these um, different wastewater sites. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Let's see what's going on there. COVID was high, still is. Wow. Nearly 1,228 pathogens still being detected. That's crazy. And you can see here the levels are starting to drop a little bit at this time, but we'll have to watch what happens. Moving on now, let's go down south, shall we? We'll go down south, and then we'll go out to the west coast. And let's revisit a wastewater site we looked at recently and see what's going on at Disney World. This is South Orange County, Florida. And take a look at this. Levels were dropping a little bit. Now they may actually even be starting to rise a little bit higher. 1,922 pathogens detected. Hopefully they will be peaking relatively soon, or hopefully this is the peak, because that is extremely high levels of COVID being detected there in the Orlando area of Florida. Now let's go out to Las Vegas. Remember Las Vegas was really high recently? Let's see what's going on there. And we do note here, Las Vegas COVID levels, they are starting to drop. That is some good news. Now let's go out to California. We'll do a couple stops there. Los Angeles. Let's see what's going on there. Hopefully we will see dropping levels. And unfortunately, no. Los Angeles is rising a little bit once again for COVID, at least at this wastewater site. 3.5 million population. Let's try another one and see what's going on here. And at this wastewater site, 4 million people service. This is like the northwest side of town. And we can see here that COVID levels are rising a little bit, but there are also a wonky movement that went down. So that's not good at this time. Let's go up a little bit further to the north and see what's going on in how about we go up to the bay area shall we san francisco and i do note that wastewater scan has lost a few wastewater sites looks like we can still view this though the bay area was dropping now there's signs it may be going up once again in san francisco so that is not good Seven hundred fifty thousand population served at this wastewater site now let's go take a look at what's going on in chicago at this time and we were going to go over to the bigger wastewater sites and this is strychnine wastewater plant north and we can see 1.1 million population covid wastewater continues to rise there how about at the southern plant yeah it's rising here as well and let's see what's going on at O'Brien Treatment Plant. That's another big one. It says here, generally, COVID-19 viral levels at O'Brien Plant over the past three weeks have been decreasing. Yes, but it does also look like here they're starting to go back up once again. So that is not good either. Let's go back to wastewater scan, and we'll just do one more wastewater site here. How about we go down to Memphis, Tennessee, and then we will call it a day for our wastewater day here on our pandemic update. And we can see here, Memphis, Tennessee, COVID is, yeah, it's still rising at this time, and the levels are high. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Sunday edition of the pandemic update. We'll have another pandemic update again on Monday, which is tomorrow. Of course, we'll probably have a BNO update, new Walgreens data, and any other news that comes across. We're going to keep our eyes closed on what happens with Congress and Senate to see if any other people do test positive. If you enjoyed this video, 
give it a thumbs up. Want to see more content like this? Subscribe down below. Share this with anyone you know. Hit that notification bell. And leave your comments down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time. Thanks for watching. And stay safe everyone. Have a fantastic Sunday afternoon.